Now to get the data dynamically for these listings, we will be creating a web API in .NET Core and we will be utilizing SQL for database. So this full stack course would include React, .NET Core and SQL as well. So we'll go to the SQL Server Management Studio first and over here I am connected to my database server. Real Estate is the DB that we'll be working on. What I'll do is I'll just open a new query window and I want to create a table that should contain the data for the listing type. We can give it the name listing. It should just have an ID that is going to be a primary key and let's just make it identity column. After that, it should have property type. And it should be that 50 maybe. After that, it should have property value. And we can have it as integer. And let's have some property info as well. This could be 500 because this particular column is related to the text that we are displaying over here and then we have value and property type. As per the current structure we have th this information available on the property type so we will keep these columns for now and let's just make it as property listing the table name okay so this is the table that i am creating which will hold the information and this information that is there in the db should be directly displayed on the page when it's getting loaded so this is our motive as of now let me just execute the query and it says command completed successfully so as of now if i just run a select statement from this table nothing should be retrieved because the table is just created it doesn't have any data what we'll do is we'll just insert some dummy data over here and, and i'll just mention the column as well the property type so let's say it's villa only the first one that we have then the value let's keep it as such and then after this we'll have some information nine bhk villa Prime location in the outskirts of the city. So it's just some random information, and let's have an apartment. <coughs> And value okay 90 perhaps maybe and after this have it as 1 bhk city center that could be studio apartment 
and for the studio apartment let's keep it as okay Now, let's have one more. Maybe we could have one more villa only for now. And okay, so this is just some random data that I have created and will insert it so now if I just have a select query on this table I'm able to see the data successfully and you see that the ID column I did not insert any data in the ID column I did not mention this over here but the data is automatically inserted in ID column because it's identity column and it's getting incremented by one the value of one and it started with the value of one only as we had mentioned while creating the table itself so we have the data readily available in the db now now we'll move on to creating the web api to fetch the data and after that we'll be working on the react application to fetch it on the browser so i'll just open visual studio and in the visual studio we will be creating a new project we are going to create asp.net core web api and let me just keep it in the same folder so this is the real estate front end and what i want is it should be created over here with the name real estate backend api i just press next and this is in dotnet 8 so we say that it can create it okay so the web api solution is created and we have some files over here and these are added by the visual studio itself when we are creating the web api but we don't have to work on this what i want to do is i want to create a new controller now before creating the new controller i just want to explain to all of you that we will be using entity framework for connection to our database and for that we need to make sure that we have the correct dependencies in the solution so we need to install some packages and it's going to be microsoft.entity framework core this is the first package that we need to install it would just ask you some questions and you have to simply accept it so this is installed now and then the next one we have is sql server need to install this one as well and the same acceptance over here for this one After SQL Server, we just need to install tools for Entity Framework Core. And now, if we just check which of the packages are installed, so we have our three packages for Entity Framework. Now after the installation of these packages, what we'll do is, I'm just going to create a new folder for models. And now we are not directly going to add the files into this folder as this is a DB first approach that we are using because we already have the table in the database created, right? So what we want is we want our application to know the table structure and directly create the model for it. Now for that we'll just open and in this 
I already have the command with me. So I am pasting it over here. I'll just explain to you what the command says. It's trying to ask the Visual Studio to scaffold the DB context class using the connection string that I have for my database. And what I want is that the output directory should be models. So this is the folder that I have already created over here. I'll just run this command. Now it is saying that the build is succeeded. So we have our DB context class created and this is what we'll be utilizing. Let me just make some changes to this. I'll just rename it to DB context and then the constructor can be renamed. And we'll remove some of the code from here. We don't require it currently. So we are keeping it simple. We have our property listings property over here in this particular class and this is being used from this model property listing so this is the model created directly for the table in our db property listings and you can see that all of the columns over here for all of the columns we have the properties associated with it i'll save the changes over here and now what we'll do is just open app settings.json once give the connection strings we can give it the name db connection app db connection and i already have the db connection with me so i'm just pasting it over here okay so you see that we have added the connection string over here in app settings.json now for the real estate db context class let me just rename the file as well okay so for this particular class we'll need to make some changes in our program.cs so as of now the application does not have any knowledge for the registration of the db context class so that is what we will have to provide to our program.cs file We'll have to give the JSON file name and it is app settings.json. After this, we want builder.services.add db context. The db context class name we'll have to give. It is real estate db context. Should use SQL server configuration dot get connection string and then we'll have to specify connection string that we have from here app db connection so now we have registered our real estate db context class in program.cs file i'll just save the changes after this what we have to do is we'll go to the controllers and now we'll be creating a new controller for our api it is going to be an api controller and let it be empty because we are going to add the code for it and it has to be property listings controller okay so we'll need to have the first method as a get method because we are trying to fetch the data from the database that we have to show on the web browser so 
over here it has to be an http get method and let it be public and let it be a task which has to return property listing of i enumerable type get and we'll make it async why we are making it async is because we want to read the data using db context class for the table so it will have to be an await operation so i'll just mention that the result has to be an await of now what we have to mention over here we have to utilize our db context class and for that we'll need to create a property for it of real estate db context let it be named db context so that it is more clear and we'll make it a read only property now we can simply define constructor of this controller and when we are doing that we'll need to have real estate db context parameter and just assign the value to our db context so this is the property that we'll utilize over here to read the property listings and let it be list async after this we simply have to return the result so we have created the api method for getting the data from our table and once the data is fetched to the api we'll be making the connection from the react application to this api as well but first we'll have to test if this particular api method is working correctly or not so let me just execute this solution I'm selecting no for the SSL certificate pop up. Now, once the solution runs, you will be able to see that we already have Swagger implemented in our solution and we are able to see property listings controller as well. See, this was the default controller that we got when we set up the new solution. But this is the new controller that we have added. And this is the API that we have just added for a get method. We'll click on it and let's try it out. It does not expect any parameters. I'll just click on execute. I hope it should work. So yes, it is working perfectly. We are able to get the data in the response body. See, these are the four rows that were available in the table. And we are able to see them successfully on the browser as an API response as well. After this, what we'll have to do is establish the connection to this API from the React application. So I hope all of you have understood how we have implemented entity framework using sql as our database and getting the data as an api response using dotnet code